Hi, I got the sniffles, must mean that spring is coming. Um, also, there's a lot of building work going on, so apologies for the bang that will undoubtedly happen. We're going to look at the classification of bones. Here's a skeleton. Do the bones look all the same to you or do they look quite different? Yeah, they look different. And in anatomy, we love to classify things. So we're going to look at, and it will be a visual thing, we're going to look at long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, and sesamoid bones. So we classify bones based upon their shape. And I reckon from the names I've described, you could probably work out what's what. Uh, most commonly we talk about long bones, and I've been talking about these recently. So the long bones um, are long, so they're longer than they are wide. They are long bones. I mean, the humerus is obviously a long bone. The radius and ulna are obviously long bones. Um, but also we have little diddy bones, like the distal phalanges, those are also long bones. They're small, they're not very long, but they're still long because they're longer than they are wide. Um, the femur is the biggest long bone. Uh, tibia and fibula are long bones and so on. All right, so that's a long bone. So then what is a short bone? Well, a short bone is a bone that has width similar to its length. So it's not long. <laughs> Not long, it's not flat. Okay, so um, <laughs> the bones of the wrist, right? They're kind of like almost cuboidal chunks of bone. These are short bones. That's a long bone, a metacarpal bone. The carpal bones, the bones of the carpus are short bones, which means that the bones of the ankle will also be short bones. The cuneiforms and cuboid bones are probably really good examples of this because they are like cuboid shaped, wedge shaped, all right? So these are short bones. So a long bone is long relative to its width. A short bone, its length, its, length, its width and its depth are all similar, but it's gonna be a, have a fairly regular shape. Okay, flat bones. Um, this is a plastic skeleton. Um, I think it's easy this is an easy one, right? The bones of the skull, they're curved to enclose the cranial cavity, to enclose the brain, but they're flat. They are flat bones. They're thin and flat and curved. That's a flat bone. Um, what other flat bones are there in the body that you can think of? The scapula, it's a really good flat bone. It is very, very flat. It's curved, but, whoa, it's curved, but it's flat. Uh, and also then, the pelvis. The pelvis is also a flat bone. So originally, when you were a fetus, you had three bones making up your pelvis, and they join in the socket of the acetabulum, pubis, ischium, and ilium. And look at the wing of the ilium, very much a flat bone. The other bits are a bit chunkier, but the ilium, of the pelvis, that's a flat bone. So those are flat bones. So that's long bones, short bones, flat bones. Now, there are lots of other bones in the body that all seem a bit random in shape. How would you describe those? Well, these would be flat as well, wouldn't they? Um, I mean, look at the vertebrae. The vertebrae are, they, they wouldn't fit into any of those classifications. They've got a big, look at they've got a short bit here, but then they've got loads of spiky bits pointing. So they are irregular bones. So essentially, if it's not short, it's not long, it's not flat, we'll call it irregular. Everything else is an irregular bone. So the vertebrae are irregular bones. Uh, the skull has got, I don't like taking this off because it's difficult to get it back on again. The skull, while it has a number of flat bones, it also has a number of funny shaped bones like um, the sphenoid bone in here, which has got a load of spiky wings sticking out of it. It's very, very irregular. Um, so many of the bones of the face um, are irregular bones. The mandible is an irregular bone. The hyoid is an irregular bone, all right? 
Okay. Now there is a fifth class that I mentioned, and the, the, other, the other class are the sesamoid bones. Ooh, now a sesamoid bone um, is a funny little bone, because most bones of the body, they're articulating with other bones, right? A sesamoid bone is a bone that forms within a tendon and doesn't articulate with other bones, as it were. Um, it kind of protects the tendon from load as it moves. It can push the tendon away from the joint to increase um, the advantage of leverage, give it a mechanical advantage, what have you. So what's the most famous sesamoid bone that you can think of? It is, of course, the patella. And actually what I'm doing here demonstrates that quite well, right? So as I'm kneeling down, I'm opening up this joint, but because the patella moves, I'm actually kneeling on my patella, not on my articular cartilage. So the patella is a sesamoid bone. It's, we have the big quadriceps muscle here. They all come together to form a tendon and the patella is a sesamoid bone within the quadriceps tendon that runs across the knee and inserts here into the tibia. But there are, another good example is, oh God, under the, so here's the great toe, the big toe. Um, there's the metatarsal, there's the proximal phalanx. Under here, there are usually two sesamoid bones in the tendon there. I, I can show you this better on an x-ray. So when you look at an x-ray of the foot, you can see these little sesamoid bones. So that is how we classify bones in the body. They're either long or short and flat or irregular um, or their sesamoid bones within tendons, all right? So work it out as you go, but that's it. See you next week.